Next news, Muslim beheaded for interfaith romance, Hindu nationalists suspected. On September 27th, uh, Arbaz Mullah, a 24-year-old Indian Muslim man, went missing. The next day, he was found headless on a railway track in the uh, Belgavi district of Karnataka, uh, India. Mullah was in a romantic relationship with a Hindu girl. The idea of love jihad is a conspiracy popular among right-wing nationalists, Hindu nationalists, or Hindutva, that accuses Muslim men of tricking Hindu women into falling in love with them to eventually force them to convert to Islam. Mullah's mother said that her son had been threatened on multiple occasions by members of a local Hindutva organization. The autopsy revealed that Mullah's manner of death was a homicide. Allegedly, the local Hindutva group summoned Mullah to the city to settle their issues once and for all, and a fight broke out that resulted in Mullah's murder. His mother strongly suspected that the father of the girl he was in a relationship with was involved. The police have detained members of the girl's family for questioning. Thus far, police have not officially charged anyone for Mullah's murder. Um... So let's be careful here, right? This is so far, it says suspected, right? So far it says suspected. But we need to follow this news to see what happens. Is this, the, if this is true, if this news is true, is this the first like beheading when it comes to accusations of love, love jihad? Oh, I have no idea if it would be the first. I can't. You know, because uh, because that. Ghost Bunny keeps uh, also points out in the live chat, we, we, we do get like a lot of Hindus telling us that every time we criticize Hinduism and Hindutva, we do get this line like, well, at least, at least there's no behead. I, I don't want to say at least we don't behead people because if we say like, well, no, you do, because that would be a collective. We don't want to generalize and hold all Hindu or even Hindutva responsible for a crime like this, obviously. But if the suggestion is that, you know, Islam leads to beheading and Hinduism doesn't, well, that claim would go out the window if this is a, if this is if this is if this just happened. But what are, what are your thoughts on? By the way, for I mean, I'm glad that uh, you, Susanna, uses the opportunity every time to mention how ridiculous of of a conspiracy theory this whole love jihad is, right? Like people. You know, we in India we have mu Muslim men and Hindu women genuinely falling in love, love with each other and wanting to be with each other. And the accusation is that oh, Muslim, these Muslims are stealing our women, and this is kind of a, a way for Muslims in India to do demographic engineering and bring more people to the Ummah, to the Islamic community, to grow Islam in India. And they see this as a threat, as stealing stealing our women and they call it love jihad like spreading islam through love and they're against it and sometimes the consequences is like something like this right um i mean it's we have a lot we have covered this many times uh in india there was like marriage like women who were um hindu women who had fallen in love with muslim men being abused accused arrested tortured even killed um men um killed and burned because they fell in love with the hindu woman i mean weddings attacked and crashed and this so this has been such a major source of misery by people who take the law in their own hand and the police who actually lets them do because what they want because these mobs are just so intimidating and some of some some of the time uh, so many of the time, um, the police actually um, takes their side. These, these, you know, a lot of these Hindu mob. But you know, it's so disgusting because it, this, if you had, if this was fiction, people would think that this side that is like against love is just too evil to be believable for a fiction. Like these people are genuinely like accusing people who want to be with each other and are just in love with each other, and they're going and attacking them and killing them and accusing them of this ideological like people who genuinely want to be with each other and every time we say that this is a conspiracy 
they keep pointing us to real examples of Hindu women being abducted in Pakistan. You know what I mean? As if like we, we are we are as if we are dismissing those real abductions. Um, but then but the ones that they attack are people who d genuinely want to be with each other. Right. And the woman say, like, no, I'm in love with this person. I want I'm married to this person. I want to be with this person. And they accuse them like, no, you don't know. You've been manipulated. You've been brainwashed. And then we were like, how do you know that? And they keep pointing out to the examples of women who were actually abducted, mostly in Pakistan. And like, how evil do we have to be to use examples of real women who have been abused and kidnapped and killed as a way to excuse your hatred, as excuse to, to as a way to legitimize your abuse of people who want to be with each other? Susie, you wanted to say something? Um, well, you said, you know, it's important in terms of like who's suspected to um, follow the story. So um, the update um, from um, when we published this story is that now the parents of the girl have been arrested and members of a local right wing outfit or group have actually been arrested by the police. And it was according to the Indian Express that the police were themselves explicitly saying we're suspecting this right wing Hindu group. Like, yeah, the mother was saying that as well. But it wasn't just the victim's mother. It was also the police speaking to the press saying, like, these are who we highly suspect. In fact, um, an article that was just released yesterday and updated today um, from the Indian Express is saying that there is actually suspicion that the parents may have hired this right wing group to go take wow. out this man. Um, and it's really um, sad because it, the victim's mother speaking to press kind of paints a fuller picture of the, what happened preceding this. So basically like these, they've been dating um, for two years. And when these groups caught wind of it, they started to harass um this man in fact they even came and like harassed them at his home with his mother and extorted both of them saying like you have to pay us and we'll leave you alone like a protection racket um so that's how the him, mafia they, works yeah they pay him they pay them off and then like i said earlier there was um the exact details aren't exactly clear but they you know, had some sort of negotiation where they're like, okay, like you come to this city, we'll work it out. And basically, uh, based on the reporting at this point, it seems like entrapment in some form. Maybe it wasn't originally, I don't know, but it resulted in him being killed. Yeah. Again, that's, we, again, everybody's saying suspected. So this might change. We, we should, Susanna, I think we should follow this up if we get any more updates. On yeah, this, this was a huge deal. This was a really big news in India. I had so many people sending me this story. Mm. Um, not only because it's just a really big story, the nature of it itself is horrific. Like the details of what was going on with his remains are horrible. Um, but uh, also because like you mentioned earlier, there are people coming to me and saying, like they tried to, they meaning right wing Hindus, tried to throw it in your face so many times. Oh, we don't behead people. Like, and that's the only reason why you feel safe to blaspheme against us because like, you just think mm. we're a soft target, you know, like um, almost self victimizing in a way. Um, right. Like we're the nice ones, why are you doing this? Meanwhile, we were actually getting threats of beheading. And then yeah. people are sending this to me. They're like, Susie, look, like, this stuff happens in real life. Yeah. Well, so far, allegedly. Just want to. I just want to be careful about that. Um, again, if this story uh, is true, uh, even if this story is not true, again, it looks like it's true. Like it looks like the far right Hindu far responsible for this. Uh, there's always a chance that um, something else might happen. But even without the story, this stuff like this has been going on from far right Hind Hindus in India for for a while now. Um, and I, like I can't imagine right now anywhere in the world a more dangerous far right ideology growing. Like it's amazing how this is not getting more attention outside of India. 
people, even among people who are concerned about the rise of the far right, like show me, like, again, I'm not saying we shouldn't be concerned about the rise of the far right in other places, right? Like some other places that we should be concerned about is like Eastern Europe, right? But also, but also Western Europe and North America, yeah, there are far right groups there and we should be concerned about them. But show me one other place that they're doing stuff like this. Like they get to do stuff like this, you know? Like, and to this level, and with the help of the government and the police sometimes, right? Like this is insane. Or at the and very least, authorities turning their back on it. Back on, yeah, and they're getting favorable treating. Like again, this is I I I don't think the authorities are gonna let this pass because this is gonna this is such a high profile thing. But we have had examples of other situations where the women were like. Even the mob came and uh, came and intimidated the police, and the police gave, gave in to the mob and arrested a woman for marrying a Muslim. For marrying a Muslim, and uh, and she was pregnant, and she had a miscarriage in jail. Like that was her crime. She married a Muslim. We so many people are like are in hiding. I can't remember. Because... I think the miscarriage was maybe contested later. Okay. All right. That was a big story. I feel like there was some detail about that that changed, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't know about that. But then anyway, the part that she went to jail while pregnant, that part is still true, right? We don't know if on completely had baseless things because it was after they. I, if I'm remembering correctly, it was after the anti love jihad or um anti-forced conversion bill passed and they were harassing her because she had married a muslim before that law went into effect so they were harassing her and trying to penalize her retroactively for marrying a muslim without all these additional hoops that are unconstitutional actually to get the marriage for an interfaith marriage and yeah, just trying to retroactively punish her for a law that wasn't even in effect at the time of her marriage. Yeah. Crazy. By the way, guys, uh, when if anybody tells you that anti-Muslim bigotry is not a thing, just tell just remind like it it is such a big thing, especially like especially in China and India. In the two largest countries, like anti-Muslim bigotry is huge in the two largest countries on the in the, in the world, in China and India, right? And again, these people are so, this conspiracy about like love jihad is such a big deal in India. Like even when there's TV ads of showing like a Hindu woman and a Muslim man, people lose their minds because they think that the country is gonna be take, taken over. They go Muslims, threaten right? the lives of like random people who work at the brick and mortar version of that store. Yeah. Or the headquarters. Yeah. They like, and, they and broke into the headquarters of like that jewelry company. It's funny because, I mean, it's not funny, but it's, it's interesting that they don't have an issue when it's the other way around, right? When it's a Muslim when it's a Muslim woman and an Indian man, sometimes they even celebrate that, which shows how much these, like, far-right like, far right people are just the same. They see Muslim women as property because it's not about, to them, it's not about, oh, Hindus shouldn't be with Muslims. It should, it's like, it's our woman that you can't be taking because we own them. But if it's a Hindu man and it's marrying a Muslim woman, they don't have an issue with that because you're taking one of them. This is like, it's so obvious how they see marrying a woman as owning them, as like you taking away. If you take one of theirs, that's fine. If they take one of you, that's a crime. And also this whole, it's, it's very interesting that the accusation of this like demographic engineering through love jihad is made by the people who are actually participating in demographic engineering, like actively trying to like make Kashmir Hindu by moving people there and, you know, like trying to re change the balances and the percentages of Hindu versus Muslim ratio by different immigration policies, making your own citizen, making your own citizens of your country wonder if they're actually citizens because of their religion and like opening the door to Hindus to come in just like, it's amazing, like the scale of the demographic engineering that they're doing, like in daylight, like that everybody could see, is so much. And they're like, "Oh, these people are like trying to change 
the entire population of India is Muslim by going out and marrying Muslim women. Like, are you serious? Do you know how math works? Do you know how numbers work? Like, even if that was their plan, do you think that would that plan would be successful? Like, oh yeah, let's go and help pick up women as a way to individually. The, individually as a way to change the demographics of India. India, like of all countries, with that big of a population. Like, oh yeah, that's gonna work. Amazing. These people. <sighs> anyway. Um, no, you're not, you're not, guys, you are, you guys are such conspiracy, like, you're not invisible, god damn it. Anyways, um, anything in the live chat that you want to highlight? Um, not really. Okay, okay, because I, I think there, I saw some Indian people had some comments, I just thought, like, maybe, um, People from India, if they have a take on the story, be women. Well, hard. liberal Hindu is saying that um, they think that your, you know, claims of demographic engineering in Kashmir are exaggerated. Not wrong, but exaggerated. How could it be exaggerated when I didn't say the level of it? So if you're saying it's not wrong, the only thing the only thing that I said is that it's happening, and I didn't even mention the level of it. So given that you're saying that it's true that it's happening and all I said that it's happening, how could I be exaggerating it? Because I didn't say to what extent it's happening. If I didn't give you the level of it, how could I be exaggerating it? And you're acknowledging that it's that it's happening. I don't know how that works. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.